everyone, welcome back to MTD CNC. I'm Megan Zimba and we're here at the Heimer Tech Center in Illinois. And once again, I'm speaking with Brent Holden. How are you, Brent? Good, how are you, Megan? I'm doing really well. This is like a special episode of Honey, I Shrunk the Tool, but not really, but because we're talking about shrink fit technology. So explain this, like this looks like kind of like a soda, soda dispensary or beer dispensary system, but, it, but that's not what it is. What no, is this? and we are from Germany, but it's not a beer dispensing <laughs> machine. It's actually an inductive shrink fit machine. So what this is, is a, a machine that allows you to inductively heat up a tool holder, drop a cutting tool in, and cool it down. Okay, so historically speaking, what traditionally was the way of shrinking tools before? Well, it's more so what was the historical way of holding a tool. And, and, and that's more, there's a couple different options. The first is a 100-year-old technology called a Weldon set screw end mill holder, where you push a screw against a flat on a cutting tool and hold the tool. The problem with that, it puts the tool off center, so you get run out, and it's very unbalanced. There's also collets. Collets are a great way to hold a tool. They're very flexible. However, they end up with... Uh, some inconsistencies because it all depends on who sets the tools, did they clean out the collet, did they torque the, the collet chuck correctly. And so that's, uh, but it is a popular method. There's also hydraulic chucks, which use a hydraulic fluid okay. to, to clamp around the tool. That's a very accurate system. However, there's a lot of maintenance involved with that. Gotcha, so what's unique about this shrink fit technology system? So it's unique in the fact that it, the way we heat it up is extremely fast mm -hmm. within five seconds. It also will not overheat the tool holder, which becomes important for the life of the tool holder. And also the way it cools it down, we have this intelligent cooling system where it will cool it down within 30 seconds to a minute and actually indicate whether or not the tool's hot or cold. Okay, so I'm assuming in the demo you're going to explain to us what the green colors mean and then how, how that looks and how it tells someone when it's okay to touch the tool again. Absolutely. And another thing I should have mentioned too, this is our i4.0 series. So Heimer, we okay. make over 30 different models of shrink machines. This oh, is wow. a, one of our higher end machines called the i4.0 where you're able to actually scan a unique ID on the tool holder so it sets everything up for you automatically. Okay, and we're gonna get into uh, wind tool a little bit later and we'll be able to connect all the dots here with all of these demos today here at Heimer. So I'm super excited to get into that later on. But can you explain to me, like there's five spots here. So are these the cooling chambers and what is the difference between each spot? Are they different diameters or are they all the same diameter? They're different diameters based on the shank diameter of the cutting tool you're putting in. So from six millimeter to 32 millimeter or okay. quarter inch to inch and a quarter. And actually this machine will go from eighth inch to inch and a quarter. We have a little sleeve that can uh, go into one of the cooling bodies for the eighth inch or three sixteenths tools. Okay. But yeah, it's, it, you would put the tool holder to the correct spot once you've shrunk the tool. Okay, so these aren't adjustable. They come in the size that they want. That's to the correct. Minute. Okay, That's correct. awesome. So then considering that there's five cooling stations here, do you have like a general statistic on how much companies are saving by having this set up in, in their company? Yeah, we have a general statistic that say you'll at least get 10% better tool life, at least. But I mean, it's usually much more than that because again, of the lack of a run out so mm -hmm. the tool's right on center. The balance repeatability is excellent. So there's no moving parts when you set it up. Uh, you get the extended reach capabilities where you're holding the tool accurately with an extension or something like that. Okay. You get slim profile, you get great coolant through options. So you're, you're directing the coolant each and every time right to the cutting edge rather than, hey, I had a, a nozzle and it got kicked off center and yeah. somehow I'm not hitting the, the tool even. So that all goes away with shrink fit. So, I, you know, again, that's a very conservative number that we can throw out there confidently. But again, we look at each and every one's uh, actual operation and we mm -hmm. do an ROI on the machine. And we found that the machine itself can pay for itself easily within six months. That's awesome. And then once you have the machine, you can adopt this tool holder technology to all the other machines in the plant. Because really, while the machine is what we're talking about and going to show today, mm -hmm. the real nuts and bolts of why we even do this is the tool holder assembly and what you get out of it by using shrink fit tool holders in a production environment. That's awesome. Well, Brent, can you walk us through step by step of how this machine works? What I would do is I would come down and here's my unique ID and I have this little scanner here. So I would scan this unique ID code. And what that did was it told me exactly where to position the coil. 
Okay. So it tells me to position the coil to position number three. So this is our inductive coil. We also have an automatic coil, which could do that for you. Okay. Would automatically move to position. Then we come down and we press and hold this button and that's going to heat up the tool. Okay. So now you'll hear a sound. So that's the heating cycle and also the cooler just kicked in. So now I can take my old tool out. If I have my new tool ready, I can put it in. And now it's a very easy indication of where this should go. So you see this is blinking. So it tells me this is the correct cooling body for this particular tool holder. Gotcha. And now it sits over the tool. The red is actually telling us the tool holder's hot. So that's actually measuring temperature though. It's not just a timed thing. So it's actually measuring the tools too hot to touch. When it's going to be able to be touched, it will start to blink red. And then after that, it becomes green, completely green again. And when it's completely green, then we know uh, the tool is, is, is ready to be t uh, handled. But again, when it's blinking red, you can handle it. Yeah. And then the great thing is while that one is cooling, we can grab our no other tool. And so this also has what our, we call our tool room manager software. So it's actually confirming that we completed the process correctly. So it, it wanted to make sure we were at the gauge line we said we were at. So this okay. one also has our height gauge associated with it. So what I'm going to do is another tool. While that one's cooling, I'm going to go to position number six, because that's where it told me to go after scanning the unique ID. I press and hold the button. And this is going to get a little tricky with the microphone here, but I'll do my best. <laughs> so it heats up the tool. I can take out my new old tool and then I swing this in and lift this up to the stop. When it hits the stop, I'm at my right height. Okay. And then it tells me where to go. And we cool it down. So again, and it confirms, was I at the correct height? Meanwhile, you might notice this one is blinking. Mm -hmm. So now I can get this up out of the way. I can confidently touch the tool because I know it was actually measuring heat. You can actually touch it yourself, Megan. Yep, so that was that. upwards of 300 degrees Celsius. And here now it's cool and away it goes onto the cart and then you bring on the next tool. So you see, even if it's not fully automated, right. the process is very, very fast. Now is the goal to automate this entire process where you don't have to manually bring these down? Yes, that's what happens when, you, when we have the automation cube. It, it has its integrated cooling system where you're not actually cooling uh, as we are here. We're using uh, what we have uh, on our, our sprint machines. It's, it's kind of like an air oil vor vortex system it okay. actually cools the tool that way. But it's a very nice system as well, but it's very automated where you don't have to be moving any of these as well. That's going to be so cool to see.